Between 1861 and 1868, Clara Barton, known as the Angel of the Battlefield and founder of the American Red Cross, lived in this Washington, D.C. building. She employed 12 clerks on the third floor in her missing soldier's office, where they received over 60,000 letters from families searching for lost sons and husbands. One of the reasons I believe that she took this space, took a room here, was because her office, the patent office, is right down the street, just a block away. And so it was uh, easy for her to walk down the stairs, out the building, and just go over one block, cross the street, and she was at her office. She got involved here because she moved to Washington after a bad experience in um, public schooling. She founded a public school in Bordentown, New Jersey, grew it from three students to over 600, and then when the town decided that they wanted this to be a permanent fixture in their community, they hired a man to become the principal. Um, back in those days, women weren't considered um, competent to do things like that. And so even though Clara had built the place from ground up, when she was replaced, she was, uh, let's say, not quite very, you know, a little bit on the insulted side. And so she left Bordentown pretty quickly and decided to move down to Washington, D.C. She said she wasn't sure why. But she did come down to Washington, I guess a change of pace. She was very independent, didn't want to be considered a dependent of her family in Massachusetts, so she was really trying to develop her own independent life. And Washington was a good place to do that. Um, she was such a good organizer and um, clerk, and she had fantastic handwriting for the day, um, that she was able to secure a position uh, through another man from Massachusetts, Charles Mason, um, who was the commissioner of patents, to work as his confidential clerk at the same rate that men were paid, which is extremely unusual. In fact, she was the first woman who got a permanent government position at a man's pay. Uh, they had women in government before that, but they were substituting for men. So she was the first one who got that, and of course, that came back to uh, bite her because there was an uproar over that uh, f um, from within the patent office and not only did she end up losing her job but um, all of the other women in her office were literally thrown out of the office and were forced to go to the patent office to pick up work, take it home, do it at home and then bring it back for much less pay. Um, <clears throat> This upset her enough so that she eventually moved back to Massachusetts for a couple of years where she kind of floundered. Um, and the commissioner had left. And when he came back in 1860, he wrote to Clara and said, come work for me. I'm back in Washington. So she did. She came back in 18, late 1860 and um, got her job back at the patent office. Um, well, during the the beginning of the Civil War, the thing after Fort Sumter that set it off were the, what was called the Baltimore Riots. Abraham Lincoln called 70,000 troops up. The first people to answer his call were the six Massachusetts, and they happened to be former school children of Clara's when she was a teacher in Massachusetts very early on. So when she heard that they were the fellas that were wounded and being held at the, or cared for at the Senate chambers, she made a mad dash over there to visit them because she knew that those were you know former students and friends of hers and she saw that they had absolutely nothing um, they had lost all of the things they brought on the train with them in baltimore and the u.s government was unprepared to be have to treat wounded this way so they're sitting in the senate chambers on marble floor and so she um, came home gathered everything she could spare um, started asking her friends for supplies, wrote home um, to her friends in New England for supplies, and now she's in the humanitarian relief um, supply business. So she uh, very quickly realized what a large job this is, and something that she was very, very well suited for. So basically, after years of kind of floundering and not knowing what she really wanted to do with her life, she found it here in Washington, D.C., in the Senate chambers. So she um, started gathering up supplies and started um, lobbying the U.S. War Department um, to be able to take her supplies out to the field and deliver them to the soldiers herself. And of course, that was a tremendous ser service 
um, because although they thought a woman at the time couldn't handle going to a battlefield, not only did she go to the battlefield and help the wounded, she would move forward on the battlefield and help wounded soldiers being pulled off of the field instead of waiting back at the field hospital for people to come to her. And she always wanted to, she always said that she wanted to fill the voids um, a need where they were out there, and that's really how she became the humanitarian relief organizer um, that she that she's known for today, and developed the American Red Cross. So it's really a tremendous story.